short-term rentals, they were all the rage, especially during COVID. During those COVID years, it seems like you couldn't lose, and the good times, well, they'd never end. Buy the house and just sit back and just let the money roll in. Well, it looks like that train fell off the tracks, and the party, it may have just ended. Real quick, my name is Jeff Chubb, and I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent. I've sold more than 1,000 houses. If you're new to the channel, then I appreciate you considering subscribing. And if you're thinking about buying or selling a home, then you should give me a call or maybe possibly send me an email. Questions we are going to answer over the next couple of minutes are, hey, what's going on with the short-term rentals on the Cape? And if you're an owner who has a property that isn't reaching your expectations, then what can I do? We all know the story. COVID hits. People are locked up for an ungodly amount of time. They finally break the chains of the lockdowns and shift their spending habits from goods over to experiences, which included Cape Cod vacations. And short-term rental companies like Airbnb and VRBO were there for the party. Last year and the years before it, the Cape was at nearly 100% occupancy rate. If you were an owner, it was hard to lose. This helped swell the average sales price of properties on the Cape, which thereby increased homeowners' expenses to carry those properties. Check out this article on Boston.com, published in February. Strong rental availability reported for Cape Cod summer season. Last year at this point, we were about 80 to 85% booked for the July and August time period. This year, we're at 60%, and he ended up being right. Check out the availability of some of these houses, and for the record, I didn't have to look long to find these examples. This is a stunning house, seven beds, seven and a half baths, and close to the water, with essentially only half of July and half of August booked. Those two months, they're prime months, make it or break it months, and this house could very well sit vacant. This cute two-bedroom cottage in Chatham, it was even worse. They have pretty much all of August available, with all of July currently available. Keep in mind that I pulled this info on July 10th, so even if we assume that the last week was booked, that's not a great sign of a good year for these owners. So what's going on? New inventory has increased availability for what is sure to be another busy season on the Cape Day quote. That quote is again from February. He also goes on to say that there was a big turn in the real estate market, which increased short-term rental availability. 37% of the housing stock on Cape Cod are second homes. And here is the key to the additional inventory issue. Quote, unquote, so I think we sort of emerged from the pandemic. We're starting to see some of those properties become available as short-term rentals. In other words, since the world has opened and people aren't restricted on their travel, the shine has come off the shoe, and they aren't spending the entire summer on the Cape, or even at all. They are now opting to do a short-term rental on the house for their time that they're not there. So let's fast forward as we are in the summer rental season right now. This article, it's from the Financial Times. At the start of June, bookings on WeNeedAVacation.com were 33% below their 2021 level, and the number of available short-term rentals is up 18% over the same period. And here's the business insider jumping in on the action. Even as the vacation hotspots enter its busy season, locals are seeing the demand for vacation rentals soften. The occupancy rate is down 20% from last year. Airbnb still has more than 1,000 listings available for a week in July or August, while VRBO still lists several hundred properties. Check this place out. Three bedrooms, one bath house and sandwich. This owner has reduced their price by nearly 19% from $249 a night down to $202 a night. Hopefully, that's going to make a difference with nearly three weeks unrented in August and two in July. Or this three-bedroom, two-full-bath home in Bourne that goes for $315 a night. They only have one week booked in August. July wasn't as bad as it looks like they have a week and a half booked, but that's not good. Not a whole lot better for this two-bedroom in Hyannis for $399 a night. They have the rest of July available with 12 nights in August booked. Again, this is the prime time for Cape Cod rentals. Thick boom or bust. Here's what's a little crazy. Even with this lack of demand, owners are still pushing up prices higher, and this ends up lowering demand. It's said that the average daily rate has climbed to $619 from $525 last summer. But it could be that these owners are caught in the classic catch-22. Expenses, they're going up. So that means that rental rates have to go up, right? Well, the Financial Times talks about a homeowner named Rob who bought his latest rental home in 2021 in Centerville. 
He estimates that running costs have increased between 40% and 50% in the last year. Costs are up. The amount of rentals is down. The people who bought in 2022 and 2023 who locked in that higher interest rates seem to have been late to the party and must be taking a bath right now. I mean, this place looked awesome. Two bedrooms that are a waterfront on a beach with a hot tub. Sign me up. $435 a night. And if you also think it's awesome, then you can pretty much pick any day you want for the rest of July and August, with the exception of four days in August, that is. If you're seeing that right, this place has no rentals booked, with the exception of four days for the rest of the summer. And this two-bedroom, two-bath in Mashpee doesn't fare much better. Heck, they even have it in their description. Discount July and August rates at $375 per night. They currently have five days rented for the rest of the summer. Five days. If this place has caught your eye, then you have the run of the mill. Pick any day from now until the end of August that you'd like. Actually, until the end of October. Because there are no bookings currently leading all the way up to the time they close down that house in the end of October. I think we've effectively highlighted the issue. There are a lot of owners who aren't getting the rent and the revenue that they need in order to carry the property until the next summer season. Hopefully these owners have a war chest of reserves and are able to pay the mortgage payment and carry the property for the next nine months. Otherwise, there could be some issues brewing on those sandy beaches. And the issues could compound and get worse and worse the longer a troubled property owner waits. This could be the beginning of a doom loop. So what's a doom loop? And what are the options for a property owner right now? Quite frankly, the options are limited. The first option is to grin and bear it. Carry the property paying the mortgage and its upkeep bills while hoping and praying that next year will be better. And while hoping it is better, that homeowner may need to consider doing some updates to the property or increasing the property's exposure through additional marketing and even cutting the price next year to ensure that they have the demand to carry them through that summer season. The second option is renting the property for the long term. This can be tough to do as there becomes a lot of competition from landlords looking to get anything to help cover their costs for the next six to nine months of the fall through spring. It's almost a race to the bottom, if you will. And I expect that market to be even more flooded this year. And the third option, it's selling. And preferably, not at a loss which is where that rub may come. With this many vacant rentals, I expect there being more property owners who need to sell this fall. The longer you go into the fall market, then most likely the more listings that you will see come on the market and thereby the more competition that a homeowner will have. More competition, well, that equates to lower prices, especially when you have some owners who need to sell. Homeowners that need to sell may be willing to cut their losses and sell to break even or even at a discounted price in order to get out of the hassles of the investment. This puts downward pressure on pricing, which in turn creates that doom loop. Dare I say that we could see some short sales? Dare I say that there could be some great buying opportunities down there? In other words, the sooner the better for a property owner who is looking to get out of the short-term rental game. If you bought it early, then you most likely have some equity to play with. If you bought on the Cape in the last year or so, well, then we may have to be a little bit more strategic and figure out the best course of action. If you're a homeowner that is going through some hard times or just tired of the short-term rental game, then reach out. I'm happy to talk. Having sold more than a thousand houses, I've dealt with this type of situation time and time again. It's a tough spot to be in, and there isn't a blanket answer for what is best. But knowing what your options is the utmost of importance. You can find all of my contact information in the description below, or you can reach out to me at youtuberealestateagent.com. Until next time.